right now. I want to give you my subject first so you will know what we're doing today. Uh, when I say understanding, when I said there was a time that I didn't understand, actually, literally, I did not. I taught a lot of messages, and I was doing good for his people, so, but I didn't have the vision. I didn't know the vision. You know, and it's just like I was talking about this morning in, in, in minister's class, how you can fly an airplane, you do pretty good around town, you know, because somebody tell you what to do, but when they tell you, okay, now we're going to go to Italy, Spain, Europe, and if you don't know navigation, you lost. That's how it is with ministry. You can preach a sermon, do good, whatever, but to be able to navigate, to be able to follow the, the spirit where, where it leads and guides is where I'm, what God working on me with, okay? So let's go now to uh, uh, the Word of God for today. And that's going to be the book of Galatia, chapter 3. We're going to look at verse 13 and 14 for the book of Galatia. From the book of Galatia, chapter number 3, we're going to be dealing with a word today called crucified. Because we want, we want you to understand the difference in Paul's ministry, because I'm still teaching on, on the Apostle Paul ministry. So I want you to understand the difference between Paul ministry and the other thing. I'm talking about to the Gentile and his ministry to the Jews. When it came to ministry to the Gentile, he dealt with the word the crucified. He dealt with the word the cross because he wants us to know how he saved us. And so I taught a teaching on saved by grace, and then I did one for the Jewish believer. Anybody remember the other one? I gave you two. One was for us, by grace you saved. Then I told you how they are saved. I'll get that later on in the class. All right. But the book of Galatia, chapter 3, uh, and verse 13. So you got to understand, when Christ came and died, he died for us and the, Jew, and the Jewish believer. He died for the sins of the world. So you got to understand that, but, but his death was double. And when I say that, that means that there was a spiritual death that he did and a physical death that he did. How do I know that? Because Adam died twice. So for Christ to restore us, he had to restore us to spiritual death and to natural death, or spiritual life and to, spirit, and to natural life. All right, so we can see this uh, in Paul's teaching. So you remember when Adam ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? The Bible said, the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. How many know he died that day? Right, he died that day, but he died spiritually. To be spiritual death means to be separated from God. That's called what? Spiritual death. Then there's natural death. See? So you got to understand something. We, we have natural life, but we're going to need spiritual life because if you don't have spiritual life, you're never connected with God. See, that's John 14. If you ever get a chance to read John 14, think about relationship. One word, what it's called? Relationship. relationship. All right, get a chance, we'll go there. John chapter 14, beginning verse 1. You can put your notes. All right, now, Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14, we can get our subject. It says, Christ hath, past him, redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Curse is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Why did Christ die on the cross? That the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we as Gentiles might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. That is a powerful teaching there in those two verses. There's a lot in those two verses. It gives you everything that God has. So I want to start today's teaching talking about why Paul preached Christ crucified. Why Paul preached Christ crucified. Now, he preached Christ crucified we know to the Jew, to the Gentiles, because the Jews rejected him. But why did he, why did he just preach the kingdom to us? See, that, that's the question you want to ask. 
Why did he preach the kingdom of God to the Jews? Why did he preach Christ crucified to us? See, that is what we're about here. All right, now in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, I'm going to say it again. Verse 13, my subject once again is we'll continue the series on the Apostle Paul ministry. Uh, it take a long time because he wrote the whole New Testament pretty much. Amen. All right. Christ has past tense. Remember, if it's grace, it's past tense. Tell you what God has done. Christ has past tense redeemed us. Now, we know redemption was for the Jewish believer. He redeemed us. So when you put that together as Jews, then you'll see if you read it this way. Christ has redeemed us Jews from the curse of the law. Why? Because Gentiles were never under the law. So Christ redeemed Israel from under the law. How did he do it? Being made a curse for us, they said. Well, how was he made a curse? He died on the cross. He was crucified. See, that's how he redeemed them from the curse of the law. He had to be made a curse. He had to die on the cross. He had to take the punishment of all the curses in his own body. Just think about it. When you read Deuteronomy chapter 27 sometime, you will see uh, all the curses. That's Deuteronomy chapter 27. See, Deuteronomy chapter 27 was all the curses that Israel would go through if they didn't obey the word of God. They didn't keep God's law. Then Deuteronomy chapter 28 was all the blessings. And most people would always read the blessings. Blessed this, blessed the city, blessed the field, bless, all that's fine. That was a blessing. But they didn't get the blessing unless they obeyed the covenant. Deuteronomy 27 was what they would get if they didn't obey, was the curses. Well, the book of Revelation is the fulfillment of Deuteronomy 27 because they did not obey the, uh, God's covenant and the curses was the book of Revelation. See, it had nothing to do with us as Gentiles. That was the curses that came on them. That's why it was called plagues and all them plagues and, and things that came on them, okay? When you read it, think about Deuteronomy 27. All right, now it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curses are everyone that hangeth on the tree. Crucified, all right? Why was Christ crucified? that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through faith, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the Holy Spirit. Remember the promise of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit through faith. See, there are people teaching you that you can receive the Holy Spirit by your confession. By, we told you that in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead. It never told you to receive the Holy Spirit in there. It just said, thou shalt be saved. And people base their salvation on Romans 10, 9, and 10. You cannot receive the Holy Spirit through Romans 10, 9, and 10. You can't be saved. I'm talking for us, you in Christ, Christ in you. You cannot be saved, Christ in you, the hope of growth, through Romans 10, 9, and 10. It doesn't teach that. All right? So that's what you got to understand. All right? Now, my subject, once again, is why Paul preached Christ crucified. All right, I gave you some reason right here. Now, what I want to do is I want to go over to now in uh, Galatians chapter 4, and we want to look at verse number uh, 4 because I want you to know he was talking to the Jewish, the Jewish believer. So Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4 says, but when the fullness of time, was come. We're talking about the dispensation of grace. Say that with me. The dispensation of grace, dispensation of grace. is called is called the fullness of time. Fullness. All right. And we know that word fullness has different meanings, doesn't it? And one of them is end. The end of time. See, because once grace came, you were back in the spirit and there's no time in the spirit. Okay, let me move on. All right, verse 4 says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law. See, Jesus came in B.C. 3, the last three years under the law. All right, that's why he died A.D. 30. That made him 33 years old. All right, uh, 
Why did he come? Here it is, to redeem them that were under the law. Well, that could not be us, right? We were never under the law. Why? That we, talking about Jew, might receive the adoption of sons. All right, now let's show you that in the book of Romans. Uh, and let's go back in the book of Romans, uh, chapter number three and verse 19. Uh, this is not in my notes, but I need to show you this. Romans 3, 19. See, you've got to understand the law was only for Israel, but God had to redeem them from the law before he could minister to us, before he could save us. It's all, he came to Israel. He came to his own. All right. Now, here we go. Watch this. Romans chapter 3 and verse 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it says to them that were under the law. Come on, say, I, I was never under the law. Right. And why did he do that? That every mouth may be stopped, that all the world may become guilty before God. Now, when God said world, he's, he's talking about the people of that day. That day, he only had the Middle East. Let me say it again. He only had the Middle East. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to be able to cover that right now, but I wrote all those names down. If you ever just Google what nations are in the Middle East. See, during the times of Christ, you only had the Middle East. So we have to understand that. I mean, you can name, I could name probably 10 right now of the Middle East, you know. And that's why if you got, you got Babylon, you got uh, Africa, but then you got Egypt that's in Africa. See, all those was nations. And then you, you had the, uh, uh, Iraq, See, Tehran, all those uh, areas is the Middle East. See, that's, that's what, and then right in the heart of all those nations was Israel. He put them right in the middle. All right, and the Bible told us why that man would seek after God. If happily he may find him, that was in the book of Acts chapter 17. All right, so we have to understand he's not talking about all this other stuff that people are trying to talk about today. All right, now let's move on. So I gave you uh, Romans chapter 3 and verse 19 again. said, now we know that whatsoever thing the law said, it said to them that were under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. All right, so we know what God said to them. He said to them because they were under the law. All right, and let's show you one more. Romans chapter 6 and verse 14. I'm just showing you you're not under the law. You never was under the law. So when you are doing stuff like we were, we got that from religion. See, God delivered this church out of religion. And we have to understand that. When, and people don't know they're still in religion. If you're still doing the bread on the table to serve communion on the first Sunday, you're in religion. That's tradition of men. That's not in, Paul does not teach us to do that. See, you gotta, that's why I'm going through the, the, the ministry of the Apostle Paul. And people say, well, it is in there. It wasn't talking to you. Read 1 Corinthians. It's not talking to you. See, we, we'll take something out of the Bible. We say, see there, and that's what people did. All right? Also, when we water baptizing, it's not in the New Covenant. It's in the book of Acts, but it's not the New Covenant. The, the book of Acts was not the New Covenant. Paul, the first book of the New Covenant is called Romans. Not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is Jesus' ministry. It's not the new covenant. Jesus started in the old covenant and took us to the new covenant. That's what his purpose is to take us to grace. The Bible said in John 1, 17, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was about Christ. Everything about Christ. That's why the apostle Paul gave you the new covenant. It's the revelation of the old covenant. And the book of Acts is a transition from the old covenant to the new covenant. The new covenant don't start until the book of Romans. All right. That's why I talked about salvation. All right. Now, uh, I want you to know uh, for what we teach it on, but I want, I want to kind of back up a little bit to show you where we came from for those who watched us on television. We, we taught before this, we taught uh, 
As a matter of fact, we on tape 119. If that'll help you out. <laughs> on the Apostle Paul ministry, and we are not done. All right, so we talked about the gospel of our salvation, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. We're just going to go to and catch up here. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Because these books told you how you receive the Holy Spirit. Now, I say to people who listen to this broadcast, if you deceive, it's not going to be nobody's fault but yours. Now, because you're believing other people, and you, can, you believe other people, you're going to get deceived. That's how I would deceive. If they're telling you you can do anything to be saved, you've been deceived. If they tell you do anything, I don't care if they tell you you got to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart to be saved, you are lost. If they tell you you have to do that to receive the Holy Spirit, you are lost. If you're still doing bread and communion on the table, you are lost. If you are still water baptizing for salvation, you are lost. See, my job is to tell you the truth. And I'm not going to just tell you that. I'm going to show you in the Word. I'm going to show you three places in the Word what God did for you. See, grace is not what God going to do. Grace is what he's already done. That's why you have to have faith to believe it. You, God not trying to do nothing no more. He's resting. You look at his word. He told you in Hebrew chapter 1, he's rest. He's, he's resting from his labor. Same thing happened in Genesis chapter 2. After his creation, God rested from all his work. Okay? Now, let's move on. Uh, let's go to Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. While you're going through these books, you want to also remind yourself how you were saved. From here, we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. We're doing this quickly because I want to get into a lot of the message today. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 13. Read together on the screen. When it's on the screen, I need you to read, read with me, please. It says, in whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. He told you how you got the Holy Spirit. Because you believe the truth. You believe the gospel of Christ. All right, the word of truth. Which is the honest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. That's just one. Now that told you about, we taught on the gospel of our salvation. Now those things on your podcast, also on the storehouse. Now next, I, the next week I, we talk on the gospel of Christ. Let's go to Romans chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. Romans chapter 1, and verse 15 and verse 16. See, once you become a believer, then you have to eat the word. You are a believer. Okay, you now have the spirit of Christ in you. See, it's, it's just like you, you, you're born a, again, or you're born the first time physically. You have to eat. All right, you know that. The physical body needs physical things. The spiritual body needs spiritual things. The only spiritual thing you got is the word. Okay, and that's what happens when you don't eat. You, Things just, your flesh began to take over. Your mind cannot be controlled without the word. Let me say it again. Your mind, your soul cannot be controlled without the word. Your soul began to think of things that it should not be. So when you're going through things in your body, you need to understand you need more word. You got to put more word in you. Your soul needs to be stronger. And that's what the word does, to, to be able to combat the things that's trying to come through your flesh. I'm just telling you the truth. I, yesterday, I, I went through something. Yesterday, I slept on my right side uh, Friday night. I woke up Saturday in the morning, and I was limping. And I thought about it. I'm going to, what? No. That's what I said. No, no, all day long. No, no, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why? Because the... Because God already gave me my health and my healing. The enemy is trying to take away from me what God gave me. And now I got to resist steadfast in the faith. That's what you got to do. But if you're not strong in the faith, 
you go, you'll do it a little while and then you're done. You know what I mean? It's just like put on the side of the road. <laughs> you know, you got this, this thing has to be continued to walk in the spirit. Amen. All right. And you have to begin to know in the word that I'm all, the enemy trying to take from me what God gave me. That's how I look at things. He healing is mine. Amen. That's what the word says. That's what the words say, amen. I, we are the children, amen. All right, let's continue. All right, I, Romans chapter 1, we're going to read that together, and we're going to start reading verse 15, would you? Romans chapter 1, verse 15, Paul says, So much as enemy is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you also at Rome. Well, what gospel he's talking about? The gospel of Christ. We learned that, right? In verse 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. That's the gospel because we are showing you today why Paul preached the gospel of Christ. Why? Why did he preach Christ crucified? That's the gospel of Christ. So he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Watch it. It is not one of the things. It is the power of God under salvation. This is the only gospel that guarantees your salvation. And yet thousands, I said thousands of people are believing God for water baptism for their salvation or their confession of their faith for their salvation. That's all I'm saying. That's not Bible. You have been deceived. How do I know? Been there and done that. Got the t-shirt. All right. Watch what he said, Romans 116. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God and the salvation to everyone. Not some of some folk, everyone that believe it. First to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Watch what happened when the gospel of Christ is preached. When the gospel of Christ is preached, verse 17, the righteousness of God is revealed. The righteousness of God is revealed. Well, what is the righteousness of God? Faith. See, the righteousness of God is revealed. You can't get righteousness without preaching the gospel of Christ. Remember, I gave you that in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Remember, he redeemed Israel from the curse of the law, being made a curse for them, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. How? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, it's not, it's not through, through confessing. This is what God does for you when you believe the gospel of Christ. All right, now let's, uh, we gave you those two. Uh, we gave you Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. We gave you Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. We gave you Romans chapter 1, verse 15 through 17. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. We're going to verse 17 through 24. Why Paul preached Christ crucified? Here's another reason. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 17 through 24, because Christ crucified is the power of God. Christ crucified is the power of God. Christ crucified is the wisdom of God. So when you're preaching Christ crucified, you are preaching the power of God. As a matter of fact, Christ is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit power. That's why the kingdom of God come with power, because that's what Christ is, the kingdom of God. You don't have any power if you don't preach Christ. Christ is God's power. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, start verse 17. 1 Corinthians 1, 17 through 24. You're going to see out of this why. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 next. And I forgot I told you we're going to go to Ephesians. Don't forget that Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. All right, let's do 1 Corinthians first. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17 says, for, Read, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. What is he saying? If you water baptize, and then you turn around and preach Christ to be saved, which one of those you believe in to be saved? See, if you ask people, you say, well, well what a minute, wait a minute. Are you telling me you got, well, you, you ought to. You got some they don't want to commit. Well, you ought to. Well, my point is why I ought to. Don't just sneak it in why I ought to, because if I'm saved by grace, why do I need to be water baptized? Water baptism is an Old Testament ordinance. And here Paul called it tradition. 
Why? Because he knew. If you go back in Paul's ministry, he'll tell you in Galatians chapter 1, the tradition of our fathers. That's what he was. See, that's why they came at him in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 about water baptism. And he said, I thank God, I baptize none of you. Right. All right, here we go. Watch this. For Christ sent me not to baptize. He's answering their questions. But to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of word, lest the cross of Christ. So if he water baptized, the cross of Christ would, be, would have no effect. Or it would have no power. See, pastors, I hope you hear me. Listen, if you do communion in your church, you're not going to have no power in your preaching. Your words will, will be without power. See, God is not going to empower you, empower your ministry if you don't preach Christ. See, I had to learn that. That's why sometimes I told you when I have you to stand up, you have pain, I tell you the pain is gone and it's gone. That's power. Well, it's not my power. It's the power that the Spirit does in the church when you preach Christ. He is witnessing that you are preaching the gospel of Christ. He's, going to, he's with you. He's letting me know I'm here with you. But if you don't preach Christ, the Spirit is not going to bear witness. All right. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of the word, let the cross of Christ, the cross of Christ, should be made of none effect. That's the gospel. All right. Verse 18 says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Said so the, so the preaching of the cross said preaching Christ crucified, preaching Christ crucified. Is, the is the power of God. Right, that's God's power. And that's why he says the next verse, see, to, to the, uh, to, let's skip down in verse 21. I don't have time to read all that continue. In verse 21, skip down to verse 21. He said, for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God. Just think about it. By the foolishness of preaching, to save them that believe. That's why I told you, you are in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that's not going to save you. If you're talking about water baptism, not going to save you. The only thing going to save your soul is the gospel of Christ. Now, you got to understand what I mean. God already saved you 2,000 years ago, but it can never happen. Listen, the, 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 gospel, the gospel is twofold. It's what God did the first time and what God did the second time in your life. Let me say it again. The gospel have two things going on in his word. First, when Christ came and crucified, it was so all men could be in Christ. But the gospel of Christ is individual. So Christ could be in you. Let me say it again. The first time Christ came, it was so all men, that was his mission, to put all men in Christ, to make all men right with God again. That's his mission, to die for the sins of all men. That was his mission, but to make man right with God, to reconcile. I'm going to go through it in this teaching, go to reconcile all men, and he did. But when Christ come the next time, it was personal to you, individual to put now Christ in you. See, man can't say God is not fair and just because God saved everybody. But if you don't get to be with him for eternity, it's your fault because he already put in the Bible how to receive the Holy Spirit. I just gave you already Ephesians chapter 1, 13 and 14. Showed you how to receive the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 3, I'm going to go to after a while. Verse 6 told you how to receive the Holy Spirit. You can only get it by the gospel. So God did a work of putting us all in Christ to make man right with God again. That was for the cross his fault. But the gospel of Christ is to put Christ in you. Do everybody understand? <laughs> right. So you can't just say, I'm um, saying, listen, this is for a man that just died. He, he, he did not know how to handle this. Because he found out in the word that Christ died for all men. And he told everybody in his church, well, everybody's saved. Yeah, but you don't have the spirit in you. Christ, see, God did a work to save you. 
That's why it's called Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5, and verse 8, for by grace you are saved. That's not a question. That's God's work. The word by grace means by Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. He saved you. But you are not in Christ. He put everybody on the playing field. Lever. Nobody can say anything about anybody else. So if anybody dies and go to hell, it's going to be their fault. Now he's told you to find the tree of life. See, Adam was put in the garden when he was created. Let me say it again. God created us in Christ. That's the new creation. Just like he created Adam. He created Adam and put him in the garden. But Adam did not have the, the spirit of Christ in, in him. But he was in the garden where he was righteous. Do everybody understand? But he was in the garden, but the tree of life was in the garden also that he's supposed to go eat of and live forever. Come on now, that's something he had to do. Creation is what God did. You getting the spirit of Christ in you is what you got to do. I just want to make sure you understand me. Get a lot of great big hand. See, that was the greatest thing that I had to learn in the Bible. And I kept going and going like, well, boy, but therefore be the man being Christ. He's the new creation. You are exactly right. All men are. But all men don't have the spirit. And you can only get the spirit by the gospel of Christ. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. Not by works. All right. Let's move on. First Corinthians chapter number. Uh, I don't. Wait, let me read verse 23. Uh, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23 and 24, and we're going to be moving on. Uh, remember, verse 21 told us it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. All right, now verse 23 says, but we preach Christ crucified. Say it. We preach Christ crucified. See, that's what we do here. We preach Christ crucified. That's why we believe in the cross. And I'm going to show you what that means in a moment. We believe Christ crucified. All right. Watch what it said. To the Jews, a stumbling block. They rejected it. But to the Greeks, it was just foolishness. But the Bible said, but unto us which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ again is the power of God. Say it with me. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. So if you got Christ in you, guess what? You have God's power already in you. Come on, you got to understand. See, what happened, what happened is we want God to do it. And God put Christ in us so we could do it. It's just like Adam being in the garden saying, Lord, why don't you move, why don't you? He gave him authority over the garden. You are God's God. See, we wait for God. That's why, when, that's why I used to always do it. I always, I, would, I mean, I said, Lord, you, I'm waiting on you, Lord. So, Lord, you ain't waiting on me. I already put the word in you. I've already put, that's why, that's why I talked about Jeremiah. That's what helped me so much with Jeremiah. When that man, uh, that angel of the Lord uh, met Jeremiah and said, Jeremiah, I put my word in your mouth. It's time for you to speak. See, so we got to come to a place to realize that God's power is Christ and Christ is in us. And what we are, the body of Christ. So we need to speak. So when I got situations that going on in my life, I don't sit there and just let it happen. I said, I resist that. And I let, this is not going to happen in my life. It's time for you to go now. You got to stand up and speak. You just can't, you just can't wait for somebody else to do it all the time. But we are the body of Christ, so we'll, we'll help us or one another. And there's nothing wrong about calling somebody in the, that, that's in the body of Christ to pray for you because they have Christ in them too. That's what you got to do. But you ought to come to a place where you realize that, hey, you know what I did last night? I put my right hand under my leg and I said, look, Lord, I know I'm anointed. I'm going to lay on this hand and I already know my body's anointed. When I wake up, I want you gone. Nah, uh-uh. Nah, this, I'm come too far. I come too far now. <laughs> because all it has to do is work one time. And I knew it worked. Somebody say amen. 
and you know it works. I always tell people, my wife and my, my family is my family is like this. I thank God for my children, my wife, all of us. I don't care what's wrong with them. They come up to me and say, I need you to pray for me. See, that's humility. They walk up to me and they say, I need you to pray for me. I got a lot of people in this church doing me all the time. I can be doing whatever. And they say, look, I need you to pray for me. And I say, okay, sit right there. Bam, it's gone. But I'm just telling you that that's why, because we are the body of Christ and God's power is in us. See, we can't sit here and say, okay, we're going to call the power down. The power ain't coming down. The power already down. I mean, come on now. You all been in some churches where they think you're going to pray till the power come down. Come on now. We, we've been there. We don't have to pray till the power come down. The power is right here in, in me, in you. Christ in us is the hope of glory. <laughs> what you hoping for? <laughs> All right, so we got we to get that mentality that, that God has already gave, it, gave us the power. And so we got to use the power, draw from it. Amen. All right, now let's go to Ephesians, I told you, right? Second Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 2 first. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. Thank you. And then we go to Ephesians. You enjoying the word? 1 through 5. 1 through 6. Are we 1 through 5 now? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 through 5. Read verse 1. Come on, read with me. And I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellent speech and a wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. One day we're going to teach on the testimony of God. It says, for I determined not to know anything among you, watch this, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Why would Paul show on that? Because verse five, verse three says, I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man wisdom. Watch this, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. Say, when you preach Christ, you'll have demonstrations of the spirit and power. Right. See, that's what happens when you preach Christ. You got to be able to rely on God's power. Draw from it. Talk about it. That's why I do the work. Soon that, that DVD come out Monday morning, I'm on it. Just like your Google. When you Google something, say, I'm on it. All right. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and, and verse for again said, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Say it with me, in demonstration of the spirit and power. Now remember, that's who Christ is. He's the spirit of God and he's the power of God. But you will see the demonstration when you preach. Watch, next verse is going to tell you why. That your faith, watch this, should not stand in the wisdom of men, but where? Your faith is supposed to be in the power of God. Where is the power of God? Right here, right here. He wants you to have faith in the power of God. That's why you got to rely on the power of God that's in you. Believe God. You got all the power right here. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. Now, let's go back to Ephesians chapter 3. From the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, we want to go to verse 1 through 6 now. Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. You enjoying the word? I'm going to come to your camera, sir. For this cause, verse 1, we there. For this cause, Paul said, the prison of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me for you. See, this is why God gave Paul the grace for us. The Jews were not saved by grace. They were the election of grace. I had to go on to tell you. Verse 3. How that by revelation he made known to me the mystery. Do we know the mystery is Christ? As I wrote in a few words. Whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men. As it is now revealed to the holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. See, they didn't have the Holy Ghost in the Old Covenant. 
See, here it is. This is what God showed Paul. That the Gentiles should be number one fellow heirs. Somebody said they give us an inheritance. Come on, said, come on. I, said that gives me an inheritance. And the same body. So that makes me a son of God. See, I'm in the same body. I am the body of Christ. Right. And now next is I'm a partaker of his promise. So the promise of the Holy Ghost. Says so promise is eternal life. Right. I'm a partaker of the Holy Ghost, eternal life in Christ. How? One way. By the gospel. So you never let nobody tell you that you can confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that you can get the Holy Ghost. You can't do it. Don't let nobody tell you get water baptized and receive the Holy Spirit. The Bible just told you it's by the gospel. Don't be deceived. You get the Holy Ghost by the gospel. Let me show you one more. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. Then we're going to go to Titus 3 uh, and verse 3, what we left off with. I always want to keep mixing that up together. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 14. When the screen come up, we're ready. Verse 14 says, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. We've got the book of Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 says, I write none of these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have you not many fathers. Watch what he told them. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Now we know this same word is what Jesus talked about born again. Remember, I have begotten. What is the word begotten? The same as the word born again, right? It's the same word as, let's go look at it. Titus chapter three. He's telling them how he saved them. I have begotten you through the gospel. See, God already saved all men. How did he do that? He put all men in Christ. But then all men do not have the spirit. So how did they get it? By the gospel. That's what you got to understand. That's why the gospel, and you can't not just go preach the gospel of the kingdom and get the Holy Ghost because the gospel of the kingdom was for the Jews believing the old covenant. The gospel of the kingdom was not for the Gentiles. That's why Paul stopped preaching the gospel kingdom and he went and started preaching the gospel Christ. All right, where I tell you to go to? From the book of Titus, chapter number three, we're going to show you uh, several right here. Titus chapter three, and we want to go to verse three. Titus chapter three. Now this is showing you how you were saved. Remember, these kind of things you should keep, keep in notice. Verse 3 says, read, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers, lusts, and pleasures, living in malice, envy, hating one another, hateful. See, Paul said, look, we all been there. But once you get in Christ, you shouldn't be that way no more. And especially if your Christ is in you. Ain't that right? But here in verse number 4, but after the kindness, this grace, this, this is grace. But after the grace of God came, but after the kindness and the love of God, our Savior towards all men, that's grace. Once grace came, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. See, the works of righteousness is foot washing, is water baptism, is eating bread on the table. All that is the works of righteousness. They did it in the old covenant. Not by works of righteousness, watch this, which we have done, but according to also, Romans 10, 9 and 10, your confession of faith. It's, that's works of righteousness. That's your righteousness. All right? It's not God's righteousness. Christ is God's righteousness. Let me say it again. Christ is God's righteousness. So when you do confession, that's not God's righteousness. That's yours. You saying you say by your confession. You say by your belief. See? That's your righteousness. Romans, I mean, uh, Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy. See, his mercy is his grace, his love. Those three words you can always put down. God's love, God's righteousness, God's mercy, God's life. All those are the same words. 
But according to his mercy, his grace, his righteousness, he saved us. Also his son, because that's who his son is, all those words. And he did it by the washing of regeneration. That's why I just told you, just showed you. Uh, I just left what it was. I told you that's the same thing as born again. I gave you the word. I have begotten you through the gospel. See, that's the same thing here as not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration. That's what it is. And renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And when he do the next verse said that being justified by his grace. So all oh, that's what he did for us. Let's show you another one. First Timothy. I'm sorry. Second Timothy. Chapter one. Verse 8 through 11. We're going to key on verse 9. Second Timothy chapter 1. You entitle us back up. You enjoying the word. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. See, everything God did for you. See, this is why we ought to be saved. We ought to want the Spirit. When you think about all the stuff God did for us, that's why I'm teaching you why Paul preached Christ crucified, because it's going to show you everything God did for us. Write down the word crucified. I'm going to read this 2 Timothy. Oh, let's do 2 Timothy on the screen first. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 8. Let's do that first. Read. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Now remember, I told you the testimony of our Lord. This is what God, Paul is talking about. Christ's death and burial and resurrection is the testimony of our Lord. Don't be ashamed of that. He was crucified. Don't be ashamed. People laugh at you. Greeks, Greeks laughed at him. See? But Paul said, don't be ashamed. Timothy, don't be ashamed. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be partake of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Watch what he did for us. Next verse. Who has saved us. I don't know why people get mixed up in Romans 10, 9 and 10. You shall be saved. Can't you see the difference? If you are, shall be saved, which one you want? Shall be saved or you are saved? Right, uh-huh. He has saved us, past tense, and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works. He keeps telling us not according to our works, but according to his own purpose, his own grace, which was given to us in Christ, watch this, before the world began. This, happened, this didn't just happen last week. but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior. This was talking to Israel, of course. But now is made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has passed tense. Here's another one. This, see, people don't want to don't acknowledge, but listen, you're going to get it, this teaching. Look at somebody and say, you're going to get it. Right, watch this. Verse 10 said, but now is made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has passed tense, abolished death. What has he done? I need a witness in the house. He has to abolish or destroy death. See, people still think that Jesus Christ is going to do something. No, he's already has. He already abolished death. Let's see what else he did. He brought life and immortality to light. How did he do it, though? Come on, I need a witness. He did it through the gospel. See, all this other stuff people talk about, they don't know the gospel of Christ. He did it through the gospel. My God, that's awesome. What else I tell you I'm going to? Let's go look at another, Ephesians chapter 2. Did God, did God told you how he saved you? He saved you already. He saved you by putting you in Christ. Let me say it again. He saved us when he put us in Christ. Therefore, if any man be 2 Corinthians 5, 17, right? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? He's a new creation. Why? Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Why? Because that's when God saved me. By putting me in Christ. Now I need the Spirit. How many can see it? When you get the Spirit, now you're his son. He saved you so you can receive the Spirit. Isn't that something? He saved you Why? So you can receive the Holy Spirit. 
Now, let's, let's look at it. We, we are in uh, Ephesians now. You're going to back up uh, before you get to after Galatia, chapter 2, Ephesians chapter number 2. And we're going to go to verse 1, then we're going to skip down to verse 4. All right, let's read it together. And you, look, someone tell somebody, and you, and you. has he quickened? Amen. How many made, how many know what quickened is? Amen. He made you alive. That's when he put you in Christ. Please listen to me real good. He made you alive when he put you in Christ. He made you righteous when he put you in Christ. But you still don't have the spirit yet. You're just alive. <laughs> Do everybody understand that? You're just righteous. See, the word righteous and alive is the same word. All right. You has he quickened who was dead in trespass and sin. That's the first thing he did in our life. Then in verse 4, keep reading. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, that's the first work of grace in our life. Even when we were dead in sin, had, once again, quickened us together with Christ. Remember, he made us alive together with Christ. He just put you in Christ. That's the new creation. That's why we always sing. That's one of the greatest songs my daughter ever written, I believe. I'm a new creation. All right? Now, watch this. Even when we were dead in sins, hath, 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 past tense, made us alive together with Christ. If you made me alive together with Christ, I have to be risen with Christ. All right? By grace you are saved. And had raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Isn't this something? Here you are in Christ and don't even want the Spirit. Because nobody preached the gospel to you. That's why you got people out here trying to confess to get it. Trying to water baptize to get it. And won't let you tell them nothing. I know I'm right. Religion, tradition of men has blinded your mind has raised us up together, made us sit together, have a place in Christ, that in the ages to come, that dispensations to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. That's what he's doing in us right now. For by, read it, for by grace are you saved. He's not asking you. He's telling you how you were saved. You were saved by grace. Now he says through faith because you got to preach the gospel so it will operate in your life. For by grace, ah, uh, you say, I done what I supposed to do. Now you need the word. Now go over there to Crump. He's going to preach Christ to you. Through faith, not of yourself. Now he'll give it to you. It's the gift of God. The gospel of Christ is free. And when you hear the gospel of Christ is free, you can receive everything God did for your life. You can receive the Holy Spirit, everything God did for your life. Verse number nine said, once again, not of works. He keeps saying it. Wonder why he keeps saying it. Because people think you get baptized in water to get it. They believe you confess with your mouth. And believe me, you can't do it. It's free. Not a work that's in a man shall both. We are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus on the good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Now let's go to Second let's go to Eve. 2 Corinthians 5 17. That's the one I just got through saying. Now, why am I doing this? Because I want you to see these two verses I'm getting ready to give you. I gave you, he, you we are his workmanship, Ephesians 2.10. We were created in Christ. You got to see that, but you can't stop there. That just made you righteous. Now you add him in the garden. Tree of life is right down the hill. If you want it, you got to go eat of it. 511 South Sanford, Pontiac, Michigan. That, that I'm telling you the truth. You, you got to go eat of the tree of life so you can live forever. God made you righteous. All right, 2 Corinthians 5, 14. Let's start there. And we're going to read down to verse number 17. It says in verse 14, for the, we, we, you know, go, go, to verse, uh, seven, go to verse 16, 17. I'm just going to do those two verses because I got to do this next year. Verse 16 says, wherefore remember, Henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet know we him no more. So now why? Because you're in the dispensation of grace. No, you don't know anybody of the flesh anymore. You're not in the flesh of the kingdom. You're in the spiritual kingdom. You're the body of Christ. All right? Therefore, 
If any man be in Christ, he is where? He's a new creature, a new creation. Now old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now why? That's so important because you're a new creation in Christ. But let me show you, you got to have the spirit. Go to Colossians. Go to Colossians chapter 1. See, this is one of the things I had to learn. One of the greatest things I had to learn that I could not understand the new creation. Once you're the new creation, now you need the spirit. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, just one verse. I'm going to show you one more and we're done. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Are you there? Let's read together. To whom God will make known, read, read everybody please. To whom God will make known what is the richest of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ. Christ where? In you. See, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, right? God made you a new creation, but guess what you got to have now? Now you got to have Christ in you. How do you get Christ in you? By the gospel. That's why you're here. Let's show you one more. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. See, people do not understand until you believe the gospel, you will not get the Holy Spirit. Say that with me. Until I believe the gospel, God would not give me the Holy Spirit. See, it doesn't make any difference who you are. You got to believe the gospel. And the gospel is Christ died for my sins. He was buried and God raised him again from the dead. He was crucified on the cross for you and me. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Are we done? We're going to come to your camera, sir. Verse number 5 says, Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. Know ye not your own self, how that Jesus Christ is in you. Where is he? In you, except you be reprobate. Otherwise, you are not in him. If Jesus Christ is not in you, you are not in him. Although he has put all men in Christ. If you don't believe the gospel, the Holy Spirit cannot come in you. When you believe the gospel, now you receive Christ's death, his blood, his burial, destroying the old man, his resurrection as a new creation. You receive everything. Hey, my time is already gone. We're getting to the gospel and the next earth. Hey, the door of faith is open unto you.